We here. What's up, y'all? Locks retwist. You yeah. video, of course. Today he will be talking about Chief Keef, obviously innovator in the in the rap game and the culture in many ways. Of course, and also Joe Budden, another innovator in the culture in some ways. In some ways, you dissing these people before we even get started. I ain't just nobody, bro. I'm just saying. Okay, let's let's inform us on these people today. All right, man. First person I'm talking about today on the retwist is Chief Keef, man. Bang. So bang, both bang. Chief Keef and Joe Budden, um, oh, they, they have they make different types of music and they had different audiences and stuff. They had a very similar career. And, um, to an extent, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, they differ as an age could also play a part in that as well because Joe Budden sort of did his own, he did some things different. I'll discuss that a little bit later though. But um, Chief Keef, so initially, you know, he popped locally. He dropped a video. Chirac. Um, it was going hard through the whole drill movement. Yeah, the Chicago, whole Chicago, yeah. Chicago loved it a lot. You know what I'm saying? And then it popped naturally because of that movement gaining some fame by some other artists, you know, that were already in the game. Right. Notably Kanye West um, doing a remix on his I Don't Like song, which the video, which was the song for the video that popped and got him um, any type of, you know, I feel like obviously place, so. he, he stole out of the dance hall lane a little bit as well and just went with the controversy route. There was yeah. a lot of controversy in early Chief Keef, obviously the violence, mm -hmm. the guns, the portrayal, all that type of stuff. So that alone, Obviously, controversy sells, so yeah. I feel like that's one of the ways that he first started popping is because of that controversy. He was just a whole nother sound, a whole nother mm -hmm. type of, and the video showed a whole nother lifestyle. Now, right. I don't think that people understood it was actually a lifestyle right. until you know he came out with all these other people that were doing it too. So, um, but then over the course of the next two years, up in you know, up to like 2013, 2014, uh, he did fall off. Legal um, problems, yeah, obviously. He did you fall know. off on house arrest, all types of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, I feel like personally he was overrun by the days. And he got so, the label, you know what I mean? The label situation. It, was a, it was a lot. It was a lot going on. It wasn't even just like two or three things. It was like a compilation of things that Everything. happened over the course of like two, three years that ended up, you know, making him fall off to the point, you know, whether whether it be legal trouble, whether it was, you know, other people in his camp, and that it, was, be, uh, it was people that he was working with in, in, the, in the industry, you know what I mean? And I feel like, honestly, he did lose, he lost, he lost his balance. He was young, he had a kid. He was like 17, so it was just a lot going on. I feel like he lost his balance, you know? Strictly, I feel like, well, I don't know, obviously, but I feel like that almost comes from just prioritizing the wrong things yeah. at that time. You and know that's what, what I'm saying, yeah. With all the things in the media, you know what I mean? He's in the media for a certain image and a certain spotlight. And then he got his people in there with him. You know, he got Same all his people, people yeah. and they just on, on trash, you know? At this point, he's making some money. Right. You know, he got all buying his people cars, still. Buying buying jewelry. And all his people still in his ear. A lot of people, it was, it was a lot of people in that video. <laughs> All right, and I think maybe two people in that video made music. Him and um, Lil Homie, what's his name? Fredo. Fredo not even, not even Fredo. Fredo Toto. No, what's his name, bro? Toto. No. No, bro. You don't remember him, dude, right there in the hoodie? Reese, Lil Reese. Lil Reese, Lil okay. Reese was making. He, he made moves out there. He was, but he they made, fell off though too. As just, well. I mean, just like Keith. But he reached a. No critic, he made. He reached a, a, a nice spot up there with Chief, mm -hmm. and it was up there almost up there with each other type of thing. True. And I feel like you know, other than that though, they it was like thirty other people in that house. You know what I'm saying? And they weren't making no music. They weren't making no money. Young Chop was making some bread. He oh. also fell off. You know, so Young Chop definitely helped. You know, what I mean? he had, they had it a, too. They had a yeah. key producer. They, they had, had a sound. producer. Yeah, they yeah. had a sound exactly. That definitely helped. Young Chop didn't still produce and he's still doing his thing. Mm -hmm. But so, I mean, same. I mean, see Chief now. I mean, yeah, I feel like if anything, he's starting to find his balance now. Um, come back to understanding, you know, right. sustaining, you know, this crazy lifestyle he has and the stuff he, the things he want to do, the lifestyle he wants to achieve, and the things he got to do, like pay taxes and don't go to court. You know what I'm saying for the stuff that he. That he I, I, I saw something the other day, so props to him for that. That he put down real guns for paintball guns. Mm. So. Whatever it takes at this point, you know what I mean? The day's gonna make you wanna Honestly. shoot somebody, pick up a paintball gun and shoot him, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> Obviously, you had that, that noisy article as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like that, that was just one of the things that really, cause I was thinking about it, man. Like, I don't video. really know what other impact Chief Keith 
It's had on, on the, yeah, on the industry, other than, you know, showing that, yo, know, young niggas is crazy. So it's, <laughs> but like, you know, but and showing how, how crazy Chirac can be, you know what I mean? But I feel like, uh, you know, Noisy definitely put it, put it in the best way of saying, like, they did change the way rap videos looked forever. And obviously, they brought in a whole nother era, man. Exactly. That, that drill music, that, that, when, when is it, when was that? Like 2011? 20, 2011. About okay. 2011, So yeah. 2011, you know what I mean? It was only like before that, it was like the little bees and soldier boys as far as that kind of like, I don't even like calling it mumble rap, but that kind of just rap where it's just, Vi like it's just like just it's, it's just vibes man it's out of getting it and like it's just wild because you see people still making music that or videos even that are just not even music similar to his music but the videos the videos yeah. at the same vibe and they brought up you know pull up with a stick by by saw baby and i'm like dang that's really that looks it does the video looks just like you know it's, it's just like it's just like uh, I don't like you know what I'm saying when they was in the crib just a bunch of bunch of bunch of people with their shirts off guns flipping around just acting crazy like just thugging and that was the vibe for the song and it's like and, and Daddy Noisy really put it put it together really well by saying you know Chief Keep showed that the rappers didn't need lots of money they didn't need, that, they didn't yeah. need the eyes of the gatekeepers like MTV or BET to have a hit video Not at all. all they needed to do was just press record and have, have their camera, people there. Have a good camera and somebody to edit. And have their people there work. ready to go hard. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Um, but yeah, man, I feel like Chief Keep at this point, um, he's finally starting to understand and achieve his balance within his own life and his own obligations and goals. But you know, he's still got some ways to go. He's still a young dude, um, still figuring it out. But yeah. It, w it definitely wasn't just the videos either to me. He. He pushed, obviously that right there, the pull up with a stick shows a small piece of his influence nowadays. You know what I mean? I feel like pushed Kodak, yeah. Little Uzi, all these new cats now, they have influence obviously from other people that came before Chief Keef, but also Chief Keef right. has his era where he was popping. Showed that it was okay to do, to exactly. be like that. You know what I mean? And still, and still get still get money, still get fans, still have people right. backing you, you know what I mean? Definitely so. deserves his respect. Yeah, yeah, definitely does. For his inf influence. For sure. Whether for sure. positive or negative, that's yeah. relative, of course. Yeah. They understand that definitely he has had an effect though. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna move on to the next topic for the retwist. That's Joe Budden. Um, you know, Don't pump it up. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna touch on, man. Dude, he definitely caught, caught some fame back in the early 2000s, you know yeah. what I mean? Just dropping the music, working with Slaughterhouse, doing his own yeah, thing. He has even. bars. You can't yeah, front on yeah, the man. He can rap. He can rap. That's one thing for sure. Joe Budden can rap. Um, but, you know, I feel like I was able to see him use the days to his advantage, at least early on in his, in his career, even over between the course after Puffin' Up dropped and a couple years following that, you saw his style change a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot of- uh, Mentality changed as well. And, and, uh, he was trying to adapt. You know, he's seeing like, okay, well, the sounds are changing, different people are getting hits, you know what I'm saying? Different sounds is popping, so I'm gonna change my stuff. But people start trying to say, you know, he was biting. He had some people, yeah, I think that's part of the reason why he did, he ultimately fell off. It was quiet for a little bit. Almost chasing, chasing yeah. sounds and chasing things. That's the Not thing. staying back to. But I, I would call it an evolution. I'm gonna say he evolved. True. You know what I mean? Just to sustain what he values, which was that peak in the hip hop community and keeping some respect in the hip hop community. And that's, uh, like you said, that's part of the evolution just mixed with the days and what you think should be a priority. And it's really not a priority to you. And it may lead you down this different vision, mm -hmm. even though it might still be the main vision. And yeah. Obviously, that's crucial. It's just like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the true goals, they always change, you know what I'm saying? But the values don't, you know what I mean? So, that's the thing. And um, I feel like he fell off well to me due to the loss of balance between his personality and, you know, what he was trying to accomplish and sustain within the media. And um, he just didn't know how to keep, you know, chill out sometimes and do his thing, you know? But I feel like now, um, if anything, dude's mastered it. Um, it's found a way to, to really balance his own personality of being, you know, a thug, a real one, you know what I mean? Going out there and not, not holding back anything and still being able to hold a, a spot in the media and being able to get some money from, from that stuff between the shows he did on, what was it, VH1? Or the the love and hip, hip hop, yeah, he uh doing that made some money doing that stuff, you know what I mean? As that well. was almost a different light on him. But yeah, that's why I yeah. respect where he's at now with the everyday yeah. struggle thing. Not to really, I mean, obviously they're two different people, but um, Charlemagne and 
Joe Budden, very similar as yeah. far as that voice that in, the, in the community, yeah. you know what I mean? They're gonna say what they think, you know what I mean? They don't really care how you feel. Right. And you need that sometimes. At the end of the day, you, you truly need that, especially like, in the community, yeah. in the culture, especially something as powerful as hip hop. I just feel like he didn't know how to use it. And I feel like that's the thing, that's also- In the earlier stages? I mean, yeah, I mean, he was just focused on the music. And he was like, well, you know, I can still be in the hip hop community and not make music. So I'm gonna try this reality TV thing right. and just Love go it. full on personality and he couldn't do that. That was, that was the, too much. That was almost the the other side. That's what I'm saying. Away. That and was a whole. He was like, okay, well, this ain't working. I'm gonna try this right quick. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, at least he was trying. And he figured out like, okay, well, the personality does work. People like that. I'm, um, you know, wild sometimes wild and stuff. 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 But I gotta find but a way to bring it back to the community again, though. You know, center it. You know what I mean? You yeah. wanna be out here and outspoken and. Say what you I mean, feel. You gotta have some purpose, man. You gotta have some right. direction, bro. Exactly. So I feel like, but I feel like he found it though. I honestly feel like he's actually found a balance with those same issues, both personality and the music and the hip hop community, media, right. and as a regain of relevance within the community just by sure. being able to voice his opinion um, and being honest. You know, what I mean, through that uh, everyday struggle, shout out to Complex. So um, he's able to sustain that. So yeah, shout out to Joe Budden and Chief Keith being able to just evolve and grow over time. You know what I mean? Seeing the days That's take effect on their careers, their full career taking effect on them and forcing them to almost take a step back and reevaluate. Reevaluate you know? completely. Yeah. That's obviously what it takes sometimes. You know what I mean? Self-evaluation, yeah, like self-discipline, looking at it, self-awareness, of course, mm -hmm. just looking back, trying to see where you stand in the big picture of things goes a long, long it way. It definitely does, man. It gives you some perspective, shows you how relative life can be. Cause um, you just take a step back, things start to change. So. So yeah, man, that was the retwist, man. Thank Again, you for we discussed. Blessing us. Oh yeah, for sure. It's retwist every week, man. It's gonna be coming at y'all. Chief Keep, Joe Button was the topics for today. Um, check yeah. our last retwist. Yeah, make sure Another you check the last one. retwist. Talking about Jid and Chronics, and um, as well as the other content we dropped earlier this week. Yes. The um, mix Monday on mix. Monday, as well as the uh, story time topic and intro video. Yes. So uh, go peep all the content for Friday. The podcast, of course, is up as well. Yes. That's on SoundCloud, MixCloud. Nothing but flame, man. That's just a whole other experience. Just sort of getting the whole Friday's experience together. Right. If you guys really want to know what we do here. So, uh, so yeah, man. Hit the like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Comment if you if you liking it. Comment if you feel like we should have touched on something else with these two artists or something like or that. Or maybe touch on somebody next week. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you got any suggestions, throw them at us. We all about it. But for now, we out. Peace.